Think about other things that need to be stimulated, right? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You know what I'm talking about? Goes down there. Well, maybe it won't work if you overstimulate yourself because again, life is balanced. Simon Miller, the ball asshole here. Don't say it. YouTube doesn't like it. Coming at you once again. Look, I'm repping Skeletor today because as we all know, the enemies in cartoons, movies, whatever, are always better. Darth Vader should have won. Commander, tear this ship apart until you found those plans. Skeletor should have won. Mumra should have won. Transform this decayed form. We'll talk about it another time. Probably, probably not. Today, though, we are going to have a discussion about caffeine. Every now and then, I mention this on my videos. We're going to talk about caffeine. We're going to talk about coffee. We're going to talk about pre-workouts. And actually, I get quite a decent response in the comments. Like, oh, well, I want to talk about caffeine. So I'm like, sweet, we shall do it today. As always, I've broken it down into a list format. So I just think it makes it more digestible and more accessible. And if you could smash the subscribe button, that would rock. But look, we've got a lot to get into here. So let's roll. These are five ways caffeine rocks and five ways that caffeine sucks. We'll start with the best ones because positive and all of that and yes caffeine will give you a metabolic boost or it will speed up your metabolism which will allow you to burn more fat we're talking very small percentages here although saying that a study was done that a bunch of athletes that did take caffeine before they worked out kind of burnt 15 percent more calories over a three-hour period post-workout that those that were given a placebo so you don't know how far this is going to stretch but ultimately when you break it down if you are drinking caffeine it is going to speed up your metabolism and that is going to have, allow you to burn a little bit more fat now, that's why if you get a, a fat burner pill, they're always loaded with caffeine. We're going to talk about that later. And th I think the way you've got to break it down is this, though. Can you still lose fat and get in shape if you do not want to drink coffee or take caffeine? Yes. But is it going to give you a marginal advantage if you do? Yes. So it all depends on how you want to approach it and whether you like it and whether you don't like it. And this goes for coffee, pre-workouts, fat banners, or caffeine pills. If you just want to sort of break it right down and have a caffeine pill. But that's a great thing to know, isn't it? It's great. Straight away, if you like coffee and you're not like loading it up with milk and sugar and you know whatever, you're keeping it as healthy as possible, it is going to help you in your quest to lose fat. And of course, it gets a thumb. I'm going to give thumbs all the way around. Number four is that it can improve circulation, which then of course is going to help with your performance in the gym because your blood's flowing better. I don't need to explain that to you. It makes sense. Now, again, all of this is out there in study form, so you can get all the information, the research, if you so wish. But what I do want to mention here, and we're going to mention it more when we get into the worst ways, is you still don't know how it's going to affect you as an individual. So you will get the benefits of this because you are a human being, but there may be other side effects that other people don't get and that maybe these studies don't report that you need to, to watch out for. But indeed, yes, if you do drink more coffee, it speeds up your blood flow for obvious reasons, given what caffeine is. And then when you're in the gym, you're just going to feel a little bit more alive and where you'll feel more energetic, but that's because number three is that it improves endurance. And you know this because everybody is downing pre-workout drinks before they go to the gym. Like there was that one, like I went, was it Jack 3D? Jack 3D years ago had to change its formula. I don't think it was caffeine, it was something else. Because it was so stimulated, it was killing Mother Hubbards, which is way, way, way too much. But yes, it obviously, you know, is going to give you more energy, which is why when you drink one, your skin goes all pimply purple, and you're like, oh, I mean, that's other stuff that's in it too. But the caffeine is for most. Most of them, the bases, it's the foundation. That's why they're loaded with the stuff. Ultimately, it gives you a boost and it makes working out more fun. Let's not pretend otherwise. If you've never trained using a pre-workout and then you introduce it to your body, it's basically like lifting weights on drugs. Of course it is. It's like you take an LSD and you're running around like you know, literally like you've got the goosebumps. Oh my gosh, I just want to train. I just want to train. And it's, it's awesome. Of course it's awesome because, you know, it's not like heroin or crack or cocaine, but it's the same kind of thing. Don't forget, caffeine is a drug. And number two kind of ties into that because it will make you fatigued slower again of course it will if you're giving yourself more energy your normal fatigue levels are going to be higher than they would be otherwise and that's going to allow you to train harder stronger so on and so forth like these are the the basic things that caffeine does i'm sure you know but it's good to go over them and number one is that it can actually make you stronger and it can reduce muscle soreness now the strength thing comes from the fact that it basically like reinforces your muscle fibers and then when you are training because you have more force behind them again i'm trying to keep this lame in terms because the science is boring you know, it's going to basically 
oh, I'm trying to do the best, but it's giving you like an extra layer of concrete, which means you're going to be able to, to train a little bit harder. Again, we're talking one, two percent. And when it comes to muscle soreness, they've done studies, and again, it's marginal at best, but the way it does affect you means that your muscles may actually, yeah, be left sore, then you can recover quicker, and you can go back to the gym and achieve muscle breakdown and, you know, rinse, wash, repeat, all of that nonsense. So I'm certainly not saying that you shouldn't introduce caffeine into your diet or carry on to drink caffeine, no matter how you are digesting it, in whatever way that you that you fancy. If you think it's working for you, that's awesome. But I never really see people talking about the other side of caffeine, and this is my personal experiences, so we'll get into that now. Right, so the bad stuff. Number five is the crash. And it's massively important that you know this, because if you don't, you're going to be freaked out. If you stimulate yourself and you push yourself above normal stimulation levels, your body eventually will want to balance itself out. That stands to reason. Of course it does. So what can happen after you stimulate yourself on caffeine is you get back from the gym, you're feeling good, and as it wears out, you crash, right? Especially with the hardcore pre-workouts. You will crash. And I experienced this in my younger years when I did used to take pre-workout, and I couldn't understand what the hell was going on. I'd be elated in the gym. I'd be the happiest person ever. I'd be wearing medals. No one could touch me. Happy as Larry? No. People were saying, happy as Simon. That bald owl. But then I'd almost be depressed in the evenings, and it's because my body was trying to balance out. It sucks. And there's something else that we won't talk about here today. I'll just give you the headlines. Think about other things. If you're a man, think about other things that need to be stimulated, right? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You know what I'm talking about. Goes down there. Well, maybe it won't work if you overstimulate yourself because, again, life is balance. You see what I'm saying? I hope you do. And number four is your skin. Now, this isn't really tied to health and fitness, so I guess it ties into your health. But the thing that's already it really sort of pisses me off is that you see it on the BBC website all the time. They come up with these studies saying, oh, no, caffeine's down to hormones and caffeine to do is this. It's not about what you eat and yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I can tell you with 100% certainty in the life of Simon Miller, caffeine affects my skin. If I have anything more than one, even if I have one cup of coffee a day, which I usually do before I do fasted cardio, I have a cup of coffee to give me that little bit of a boost. I will break out in spots. And I did this recently just because I thought, oh, I haven't done it in a while. And as soon as I introduced that second cup of coffee, I even took an old school pre-workout one day within sort of, you know, four or five days. It takes a while for the spots to come to the surface. They were back. And I've done this time and time again throughout my life to the point that I am convinced that it is an issue. And I don't like it when you can read things like, oh, well, we started it. It's 100% true. Well, that's not, you, you can't, you didn't study it on me. So you don't know how my body responded to it. And again, did I get all the benefits that we've talked about? Absolutely, I did. And I love the stuff. But did I also suffer it? And of course I did. Now, it's a vanity thing, but I don't want to break out in spots, right? I don't want to do that. That's no fun. It reminds me of being in school when people would bully you for that kind of thing. I want to have nice, fresh skin that makes me feel like I'm rolling around in a field and lying on a daisy, right? Because everyone loves lying on a daisy. Caffeine can do that. So if you are struggling with acne or spots or whatever, try cutting it out, and I bet it actually may help. Number three is that it will eventually wear off. The effect will wear off. And I don't mean on the day. I mean over a consistent basis. So if you take one cup of coffee on day one, you've never had coffee before, you're going to feel super buzzed. But then by you know week four, five, or six, you're going to need two coffees. And eventually it'll be three coffees because your body gets used to it. Like it balances out in the bloodstream and stuff to the point you will not feel as good on it without adding more caffeine. And you don't want to go too crazy with it. There is this limit. The human, I mean, you'll probably never get to the point that it would kill you. You'd have to drink a crazy amount. But still, you never want to go over the top with anything because it's just not worth it, right? It's just not worth it. And that is what happened with caffeine. You need to keep taking more and more and more and more and more to the point you're just a caffeine monster. And everyone's running away from you because you just got like black stuff coming out of your mouth. Because apparently I think coffee's like tar. And number two, if you do go down that journey and then decide, look, I'm taking way too much caffeine, I've got to come off on it, you get withdrawal symptoms. Because again, it's a drug. You'll get headaches, you'll be dehydrated, you just feel like crap. I had a friend of mine, I won't shout him out because he may not want me to talk about this, but he drank so much coffee, he basically had to come off it. And for a week, he felt like he was sick, essentially. Something that you should, you know, you should be aware of. So, you know, how much you are getting a benefit of it when it comes to uh, your your fitness stuff and going to the gym. Is it actually worth it if you're going to get to the point where, you're, you know, you're absorbing so much that it's now kicking your ass? I don't think so, personally. I really, really, really don't. And a lot of people are mixing not only coffees they're having in the day at work, but then, you know, coming home before they go into the day, smash a pre-workout too. I think it's too much, which is why. Number one, there is way too much caffeine in my very humble, bald opinion in pre-workout drinks. I think there's way too much. I think a cup of coffee should be fine. And if it's not, it probably means you're taking in too much caffeine in the day. It's just my personal opinion. No one's gonna agree with me because people love 
you know, pre-workout stuff and do anything like that. And I absolutely think you should keep doing it if it's working for you. I just do. But, you know, even in the one I've got at the moment says a single, uh, sorry, you should take two servings, two scoops, but in one scoop, it's got 250 milligrams of caffeine. So obviously you take two, you take 500 milligrams of caffeine. That's like drinking a hell of a lot of coffee, right? It's drinking a hell of a lot of coffee. And some people will buy it. And they're not really sort of caffeine junkies, but everyone's heard about pre-workout. It sounds really cool. You want to make sure you're doing everything right. And they'll drink this and it'll be the equivalent of, go, you know, of a, I don't know, being a, a butterfly. And then all of a sudden you turn into an alligator. Like, of course, it's more cool to be an alligator. You're a big buff alligator, not some stupid flying around fancy pants butterfly. And they're not used to it and they're not ready. And all of a sudden they think, oh my gosh, I found the solution. And then you're going to run into all the problems that I've already talked about. Potentially. Maybe you won't. Maybe you're the greatest person in the world and it doesn't affect you and you only get the positive stuff from it. But it is not the, it's not the be all and end all is, is my point. And I do think you have to balance it out. And I do think you have to keep an eye on it. And if you do start experiencing weird side effects and you've recently introduced either caffeine or more caffeine, I certainly would imagine that may be the culprit. But what do I know? Absolutely nothing. But that's my love-hate relationship with it. I love the positives. I hate the negatives. So I kind of come somewhere in the middle. Hence the title of this video. And there you go. We're done. That's it. Caffeine's on the list. We can cross it off. Make sure you like the video. Share the video. Smash that subscribe button. Hit the bell button. Ding, ding. I do have merchandise. SimonMiller.BigCartel.com. And I'm on Instagram and Twitter at SimonMiller316. And I have a Patreon, which is how I'm able to support all this crazy stuff. Patreon.com forward slash SimonMiller316. More importantly, make sure you watch a couple of videos. Make sure you have a good day. And yeah, just enjoy working out. Because what's better than lifting those damn weights?